So again, for me, so all different robotic users have different philosophies. For me, robots are simply tools, mm -hmm. right? It's a robot is an intelligent machine that does work that humans cannot do or probably shouldn't be doing in the first place. Okay. So if the robot needs to be human shape and size to do the job, then we build that. If the robot doesn't have to be the human shape and size, then we don't. For example, uh, you, I don't know if you have a robotic vacuum cleaner, which is very, very powerful. A robotic vacuum cleaner does not look like a janitor sure. because the optimal shape is uh, like a big pancake because it needs to avoid obstacles that go under this. So that's the shape that we build. So uh, the reason why we build humanoid robots is because we want to use robots in everyday lives in this human environment. And unless the robot has a human shape and size, it won't be able to climb upstairs, mm -hmm. drive your car, regular car, use the tools. And that's why we put a lot of time and effort and develop research and development humanoid robots. But again, now I'm starting to think a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we still need to have humanoid robots, but many times we don't. Many times with, uh, if you think out of the box and you let go the idea that the, the robot needs to be human form, then we can come up with really creative uh, solutions like we showed you today. Robots that can have 360 rotating knees to climb up things and go over door seals, brilliant, right? So we're trying to figure out clever uh, mechanical mechanism ideas to uh, resolve a lot of di difficult problems in robotics. Mm -hmm. I don't like to say impossible, so I mean there's also a possibility, but the thing is the general public's expectation of robotics is just way too high. It's too much hype because the normal regular people, they don't really get to you know, interact or even see a real robot. The only time they see a robot is in science fiction movies. Okay. So people's expectation of robotics is too high. So people think we're going to have like realistic human-like robots you know, talking with you, walking around, mm -hmm. that's still the realm of science fiction. Is it going to happen one day? I'm sure it's going to happen one day, but not in the next decade. Okay. Some people disagree with me, so this is just my personal opinion. We can make robots that make it feel like it's stealing something. Okay? Mm -hmm. like for example, let's say I have a robot that has a bunch of sensors. If you hit it, if it detects impact, you have happiness parameter 0 to 100, uh, anger 0 to 100, happiness 0 to 100. If it detects that anger goes up, happiness goes down, based on that, it changes its uh, you know, facial expression. If you actually play with those robots, you feel like it's actually having a feeling. But the question for you, what is emotion? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you fall in love, you know, time stops, everybody becomes an artist. What is that? Mm -hmm. okay. So as an engineer, if we do not understand what truly emotion is, then we won't be able to build a robot that has a true emotion. We can make something, we actually already have robots that feel like it has emotions, but that is not true emotion. Okay. Some people argue that it's actually impossible. In my opinion, there's a lot of mysteries in life, right? Mm -hmm. After we solve the, the mystery of space and time, probably the last thing we'll be able to resolve is the human conscience and all, including emotion. So. So one thing that I want to make it clear, the stuff that I've shown you today in the talk or, or the demonstrations and the videos that we publish, these are actual real robots work that we develop in our lab. However, in research labs, we are, our goal is not to produce a product. We're doing research, we're developing technology. The interesting thing is the first 98% of the research and development and the final 2% to make a product, the last 2% is more difficult than the right. first 98%. So as a matter of fact, we're doing this easy stuff. The companies who actually go to prototype, those are the, those are the people who are doing the really difficult stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I claim that we're developing robots for disaster relief or firefighting, we're not looking in the next five or ten years. We're, but we have to do it now because one day we will need it. So that's what we're doing. Oh, I learn from the students all the time. Uh, first of all, uh, they, they learn, uh, I, I learn from them to be patient, <laughs> but uh, these robots, you know, these are multi-million dollar projects, and these are one of a kind uh, uh, prototypes in the world, right? So if you look at other typical robotics labs when they do experiments, you don't want to break these things, so you do like really, really carefully, you have these like safety uh, lines to make it not fall down. 
But in our lab, we do things differently. I tell the students to try to make the robots go faster and try to make, get lift heavier things, and I tell the students to break the robot because only when the robot breaks, that's when you learn things. Now can I dance? No. <laughs>